You want to know where to find customers overseas. If you go through these simple steps, you will create market potential information specific to your product no one else on earth will have. This is the first step in the fastest way to identify a customer and go in for the sale. I'm John Spires. I've been in Small Business International Trade since 1974, working for others for the first 10 years, and then since 1984, self-employed. I also teach and write and consult on the topic of Small Business International Trade at various colleges and industry associations on the side. Let's show you how to find customers most directly. Now this does not guarantee a sale, but it assures if you do not make a sale, the person who refuses your offer tells you exactly why, and then you know what to do to get a sale. And that would be, of course, overcoming those objections. At no cost in less than an hour, you can have market facts no one else has, information you can act on in order to grow your business. After that, the cost of getting your offer in front of the customer overseas will be no more than a few dollars. You can do this as an owner of your company, an agent looking to represent USA products overseas, someone in a sales department, or someone who would like to outshine everyone else in the sales department. This series is presented within the context of my courses and it assumes you have an overall tools and tactic and attitude I teach. It is a standalone lesson though, and useful as it is. I have this available as a .pdf with all the URLs and a step-by-step -step instructions as well, so feel free to email me if you'd like a copy of that. The best way to view this is with this in one window and with another window open so you may work alongside as you proceed and stop at this video vi uh, excuse me stop with this uh, video when you need to catch up okay and as I said my name is John Spires and there's my URL uh, my web page where I keep uh, information updated and resources and all that kind of thing which you're free to visit anytime John Spires Com. Now, uh, the first place we're going to go in this process is Rulings, Customs, and Border Patrol.gov. Now, this is a, a fun little page to visit when you know what you're going to be uh, importing. So, let's say we're bringing in cheese. Uh, excuse me, when we know what we're going to be exporting. Let's say we're going to be exporting cheese. Now this will be covering imports of cheese and what it is is every time somebody writes United States Customs Service a question regarding a given product say cheese and Customs issues a, a ruling or an answer uh, generally it gets published on the internet for you and everyone else to read and learn from. C Canada does this as well and I think a lot of countries do this but at any rate we're talking about exporting from the United States and this is rulings on importers well what do we exporters care about importer rulings well because the United States is a member of the World Trade Organization that's some 150 countries and uh, um, subscribes the harmonized tariff schedules of the United States that means there's harmonized tariff schedule numbers like that item right there referring to uh, products that are imported into the United States. Now we want to uh, see what uh, the American rules are on importing cheese because the other members of the World Trade Organization are likely to have the same rules applied to American cheese being exported to their countries. So this one's hard white block cheese cow's milk and we can take a look at the letter itself the reply that's going from the United States Customs Service in 1991 uh, to Marco Antonio Melendez at Honduras Import Export Company. So these letters go out to import export companies, to, to customs brokers, um, lawyers, all sorts of people write letters to customs and customs replies. So here it's talking about this kind of cheese, but that's kind of old 1991. So what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to, this is 1991, 100% uh, uh, applicability to my search on cheese. I want to change that around to the date uh, being the newest date. Tariff collection cheese, flavored oils. So these are 100% matches. Um, oh, these, are, these are by date the most recent questions. But here's one. Tariff Mas Damer cheese. Let's go take a look at this letter. And this one's going to uh, Dion Foster always forwarding. So this is a freight forwarder that's asking the questions, always obviously on behalf of a of a customer of theirs. 
So uh, they're talking about what kind of cheese it is. They're describing it. Pale yellow block of cheese exhibits a number of large and small holes. Eyes are regularly distributed throughout the body. It's smooth, dense, elastic, with a creamy, sweet, nutty taste. Uh, so apparently uh, this customs official, Miles Harmon, uh, is an expert in cheeses. Uh, uh, connoisseur, no doubt. So these are all the details. And if this pretty much matches what you're doing, the kind of cheese you're getting, a kind of a Swiss cheese with moisture content and fat content and all that, well then this is probably the HTS number you're looking for. So what is the HTS number? Why, it's this item right there. It's 10 digits. That kind of, now, Almost everybody that ever does research in international trade will do it to the four digit level or the six digit level, which to my mind is just macro data. Uh, macroeconomics data. I want microeconomic data. I want it about my kind of cheese. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it over here. Now I went through this just to make it make sure it would go smoothly. So that's where I would paste it on a little side note there to keep track of it. Because the next place I'm going to go is I want to check this number out a little bit more on what's coming into the United States so that I can study this more thoroughly and see what I can learn. So I'm going to go into the Harmonized Tariff Schedule of the United States. Now again, this is everything coming into the country, but everybody in the world subscribes to this. So I want to take a look at what the USA says about this. Now this is number is 040690, chapter 01, 02, 03, 05, and down to 10, 11, 12, and these, all these numbers, all different products go down to uh, 99, I believe. Yeah, all the different products that you can export. You can look check this out on your own and there's videos to learn more about using this but we're going to cheese right now chapter four. Now this will tell you all about birds eggs, honey, edible products, animal origin, uh, dairy produce mainly. Uh, everything that if you're going to be in this business you should read all this, know all this and the trick here in, in getting involved in international trade and exporting is don't become an expert in international trade. That's a big waste of time. Become an expert in the international trade of your product. So get expert in the very narrow field of what you do. Don't worry about what anybody else does. Better you know only about cheese. So as we go down here we're looking for 040690. So that's 040690. I want to go down. That's probably pretty close down to 9018. Now I want 904600. 9032, 9038, 43, 48. Okay, so we got cheese and curds, Swiss or That's right. Uh, this number described. Okay, here it is again in the HTS. Now I found it and I can read all sorts about other cheeses and see if there's something better or easier. Now of course, you can go and get one of those letters from the United States Customs Service just as other people have done, but they take a lot of time, they take a little bit of money. You might as well just go do this your first and get close enough uh, to start because watch, this is going to change. Uh, so I'm going to take that number again, highlight it, and note it here, get it down there. Then I'm going to go to a new place. I'm going to check some more information out about my specific product. So, um, and as you research this more and more, what happens is you become as expert as the top people in your field because they already know all this and you're picking it up. So I want to find out kind of a general way. Onions, what onions? No, we're doing cheese. Okay. It's other than animal feeding, other than substitute, it's other than mixed with cocoa, it's other than grated, and it's fresh. So I want fresh cheese. And there's a 04 cheese and curd, fresh and ripe and curd whey cheese. Huh. And there's the dollar amounts exported in 2010 and 2009. So this is a growth area. So I want to I want to learn about this. This is the Schedule B search engine. Uh, this is the we're harmonizing we're switching over from United States Customs um, HTS numbers to United States Census Schedule B. United States Customs is in charge of what comes into the country. United States Census is what charges on what, what goes out of the country. Funny stuff but here's Schedule B uh, and we're taking now a look we're switching over from the US Customs numbers on imports to the US Census numbers on exports. So we got 046 that I want to learn more about that but uh, that's a little bit vague I think we can do better than that so I'm going to go over to another place at Census Runs 
and I tell you, any any exporter can tell you about this. This is no big deal. This may be making your head spin right now, but uh, uh, no big deal. So now let's uh, put in this 10-digit code here that we just had, uh, and that's why I mark them over there so I can keep plugging them in whenever I have to. And I'm going to search this one and see what I get here. Cheese. Go down here. Holy smoke, I got bird's eggs. I got, what else do I got here? I got butter, I got cheese. I got fresh, grated, processed, blue veined, other cheeses. Well, my mine's not unripened. So I believe ours was cured or ripened or something there. I don't know anything about cheese, but I'm just using this as an example. But anyway, so let's say we go down, it's not blue veined, it's other, it's not cheddar, it's not Colby. Colby. So it's other, including mixtures. So the numbers on cheese between United States Customs, United States Census have not been harmonized. So to for uh, to declare this correctly to get it out of the United States, when I declare it to U.S. Census, I got to use that number. Uh, and then when I'm doing research from United States Census on on what's coming, what's left the United States, I have to use that number. So that's where I'm going to go next. I'm going to take that number and start researching now that I've converted from an HTS number to a scheduled B number. So now I'm heading out of here to the United States International Trade Commission. Okay, so this is a, a massive collection of all the trade data, what's everything coming into the United States and going out of the United States. I love this place. And I'm going to go now to the data web. Now, I already have an account here so I'll log in in a second but you can just scroll down and create a new account and then you put in your username and password confirm your password and then are you with the government or personal use or are you a student you know educational um, you're not US government you're, the name of your firm is you know self-employed or just yourself your phone the email all that kind of stuff then you create the account once you got to create the account you will then from then on out when you land on this page, you'll just put in your username and your password, and you will log in. All right, so then you'll set this up for uh, US uh, total exports. You want HTS numbers, not a quick query. You want uh, current trade, you know, I go back to 1989. You want all the tra trade data from 96 to 214, but we're only going to go back five years now. We're not going back 20 years, whatever that is. So we want to make a new inquiry. So now set this up the first time. Make sure you got free long FAS, free alongside value, which is the value of the goods sitting on the docks in the United States. And that everything that's your only choice. Um, this way, no matter what port it's going out of, it'll be based on, on the same. American price uh, to the port. Uh, that's what the data will show. And then you also want first units of quantity. Now the way you do this is that you just shift click, uh oh, shift click the two that you want. I don't want second unit quantity and that kind of stuff. I want actual numbers. I want five years running. I want to go back the last five years here. Uh, I want annual. Um, I want HTS 10, I want all countries, all districts, aggregate all districts together, display countries separately. I want my countries separate. I don't want them together. I want them separate. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to set up a commodity list. So what I'm going to do here is I want 10 digit level. I'm going to name it cheese and I'm going to make a new list. And I'm going to go to four, which is dairy products. I'm going to show all those items. And then what I want, 0406 90, 95, 50. So I'm going to go down here to 0406 90, 95, 50. Choose mixture. OK. So now see, they've added one more thing, including mixed kinds of cheeses. So this is a little bit wider than I was hoping for, but there it is. But anybody buying one kind of cheese is buying other kinds of cheese, too. So get close enough. It's good enough. So now return to uh, query page. Now you'll see I've got all pineapple jellies and smoked fish and sugar and red wine and spuds and everything else on here. But I got to find cheese because I've got all sorts of yogurts and products, eggs and cherries. But I got to find where I because this is putting itself in 
redoes itself in uh, uh, alphabetical order. So I don't want Kripatasia or coffee. I want cheese. Now I don't have to click anything. That's just highlighted. That's what's going to come up now. So I've got all these things on this page set the way I want them. As you see, make sure you've got them set that, not just this place, but all districts. And then I want to go to um, proceed to next step. Now, just trust me on this. You want to reverse the order of this. You want HTS numbers first. You want country second. You want proceed to next step. Now, here again, just do this the first time, and it'll stay that way all the time. You want ascending HTS numbers. Um, you want display the grid, you want uh, key variables on the first line, enable subtotals, descending, top 15, make that. Uh, font size is 3, display percent change, your select year is 2013. Now, this is 2014, April 2014. There is information for, I think, January and February out right now, but we don't particularly care about right, uh, that right now. We want to see a five-year trend of what's going on. Now, I can report this directly to Excel, so the report comes out as an Excel report, but um, no, I want it in a different way because I want to, uh, I'll show you shortly what I'm going to do with the information. And you can also print out the report by uh, put in display a printable that way. So now I just click report button, and that'll going to give me all of the uh, exports from the United States to all countries around the world in dollar amounts and kilos for every year 2009 to 2013 so that I can uh, analyze this data. And when I do, no one else in the world is going to have this information. Probably nobody else in the world has this information, is bothered to, to do this. And then certainly they don't have what's going to happen next, as I'll show you. But anyway, so what do we see here? First, Mexico is our number one uh, customer for cheese from the United States. They, and they've got a 24% increase between 2012 and 2013, uh, but they've got like a three times, three. 300 percent increase between 2009 and 2013. So Mexico is not only the biggest, it's growing fast too. Canada is growing fast, Japan is growing fast, Korea is growing so-so and they're going up and down. Saudi Arabia growing pretty good. Uh, Bahamas, Dominican Republic. Now as you look down, I'm going to do say six of these that I'm particularly concerned about. Uh, but if you go down through this list you see all sorts of Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago Two million dollars worth. Wow! Then you take a look at this. That's 113 percent. There's 100. So Kuwait's growing for some reason very fast. 127 uh, percent. Morocco is growing fast, huh? Uh, and then we got Qatar. Now, why are all those Middle Eastern countries growing fast in cheese? That's interesting. Uh, just a, an odd thing. Colombia is growing fast. Egypt. Uh, Argentina went from nothing to a lot. That's something that's interesting. Uh, who else we have? Bahrain. Well, for some reason, it seems Muslims and Arabs are, are enjoying our cheese. How about that? Uh, Germany's growing. Uh, oh, they actually dropped dramatically, and then they're growing off that dramatic drop there, if you will look at that one there. So um, you could... You could um, Google Germany cheese exports USA and then there will be articles on why it's been dropping. Uh, they'll tell you there's probably some sort of little price war or something going on there. France is not doing much of anything. So if you look down this list, okay, Brazil's going up fast. So you might find ones that are not in the top 10 but are your target country or are growing fast or see someplace like Turkey is uh, spotty. This one, Suriname, is very spotty and not much anyway. So, I mean, if you wanted to tar target those countries, you could. But as you get down here, you get into pretty much negligible stuff. But then here's the grand total in dollars of cheese exported from the United States around the world. And then we get down into kilos of cheese exported. Again, it's the same uh, the, the dollars rules. So the next is Mexico, Canada, Japan, and all that kind of thing. Um, on down the line and here again are the totals in kilos. So now what I want to do with this is I want to analyze all this kind of stuff. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my trusty template for analyzing exports. And again, this is just the flip side of analyzing imports. But uh, I'm going to change this export in dollars and kilos from onions, which is the last thing I did, to 
cheese. C H E S. Oops. Unlock. C H E E S E. And then the HDS number here. It's um, really Schedule B, but um, that's how I'm going to put the. I'm going to hide. I'm going to call this Schedule B number is there. Okay, and the source of data, of course, it's always nice to tell people where you got your, your data, USITTC.gov, uh, and people know what that is. So I want the world totals in dollars first for um, cheese exports from the United States. Now, if I just highlight left to right, this is very important. Because if you do light, light, right to left, it's going to do funny things to you. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come up here into the dollars, and all I have to do is click that first one, Boom, it fills up all those. Now that's an error message, but don't worry, we can fix that later by simply going to Arial Regular 10. And there's the numbers as they should be. And then I've got that's the total dollars world totals. And I'm going to go down to kilos, total kilos. And again, left or right. Copy. Oops, I want to go over to here. This is where I want to be. And then I just here, and it'll fill itself left to right. And again, I've got that funky number thing going on. Now, I'm not going to do this every time. I'm just going to put in the error, leave the error uh, messages alone, and go back and fix them all at once. But you see what happens there. Now, what we see is um, I these numbers, I've got it off the base here. So the uh, world totals of cheese exports from the United States between 2008 and 2009 there's a 33% increase 150 to 200 there's a 54% increase there so we got acceleration we got acceleration going on here 33% 54% 95 so this cheese export from the United States is growing and growing growing strong so where we got a 100% increase as you can see here we got acceleration now what's the price people are paying around the world per kilo 373 386 440 so the prices are going up as well as are the quantities. So this tells us there's a lot of good information here and a lot of encouraging information. Cheese exports are growing. Cheese exports are are uh, increasing uh, in price. Uh, those aren't big prices at at uh, at four bucks a kilo. That's roughly you know two bucks a pound. That's uh, that's not expensive cheese. That's really kind of cheap cheese. But you got to figure the fact of the matter is. Um, that uh, uh, where cheese is growing, where any any product grows well, there's there's most of it is going to be the the mass merchandiser stuff, the big business stuff. But wherever the big business breaks in, there's always a specialty market starts forming as well. I mean, back in the the 60s in America, cheese was Velveeta, wine was uh, Matus, uh, and uh, bread was. Uh, uh, wonder and all those are pretty uh, well they're, they're not my favorite brands although they may be America's favorite brands but you'll know where the real there's no money in those products where the real money is in the upscale and you know you walk into a whole paycheck I mean Whole Foods and you'll see uh, the massive amounts of really high-end and really tasty cheese that sell well as, as uh, uh, sell as well so uh, don't worry too much about these prices what we're looking for are uh, what countries are buying the best prices as we'll see here now this again remember was for onions or something and I'm now gonna fill in for um, uh, cheese and this particular kind of cheese so where I want to go first is up to the top remember Mexico was our number one uh, uh, customer in the United States so I'm gonna just put it there now again I highlighted Mexico so when I lay this in uh, Mexico goes in there as well. So that was number one. Number two is Canada. So I'm going to highlight the Canada too because I got a cell that has the name of a country in there that I want to replace. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to clip back here. And it was Japan for onions and now it is Canada for uh, cheese. Oh, but Japan is number three for cheese. So I'm going to copy that and again toggle back here. And all the usual suspects are showing up as our trading partners. Korea, uh, copy, 
and let's go in here not Taiwan and then I'm gonna go back here Saudi Arabia is copy and I'm gonna drop in instead of Australia for onions it's Saudi Arabia for cheese and Bahamas Instead of Korea, dropping in Bahamas. Get rid of that. I'm not sure why that showed up. And then come down here. Okay, so there's the top six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, that was the dollar amounts. And notice I didn't fix the error codes. I'm going to go down and now lay in the uh, kilos. Now, I'm not copying Mexico on this one because I already did. So, Mexico. Mexico, Canada, copy, Canada, and then Japan, that's Japan, Japan. And the next one is Korea. Korea. I hope you're timing this and seeing how long this takes. Because uh, it's not hard to do. Uh, it gives you a very powerful tool. It's not hard to do, but it, it does take a little bit of time. And if you do have the gift of ADD, you tend to get diverted lack of focus what are the problems uh, excitability uh, all those kind of fun things now I want to convert all this back to uh, take care of those error codes so I'm gonna highlight the whole doggone thing I'm gonna go down to Arial. I'm gonna go down to regular I'm gonna go down to 10 point and boom all the numbers fix themselves I told you excitability so now we got a uh, uh, Mexico 53 to 155 uh, million dollars worth. It's uh, there's the again acceleration here as well. Uh, we got acceleration here, uh, acceleration here. We got O oh, deceleration, screech, 180 percent increase to only a 35 percent increase. So it's increasing. But there it is. Saudi Arabia. Uh, we're getting acceleration, acceleration. So all these markets are 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 growing. Uh, in an accelerating manner. So here's the average price paid. Let's compare uh, what, what percent of the market total. So in 2008, Mexico bought 34, uh, 35, almost 36 percent of everything the United States exported went to Mexico. 38, 31, 42, 49. So almost half of everything in 2012. Oh, wrong numbers. Busted. 2009 to 2013. I just noticed something. I got that wrong, so I'm going to fix that right now. 2009, tab. 2010, tab. 2011, 2012, 2013. Okay, now it's all. Oh, no, it's not. I got to fix this too. 2009, tab. 2010, tab. 2011, tab. 2012, tab. 2013. Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, now I can print this or save it as cheese, uh, save it, whatever else. But I got a lot of these things from all different kinds of products and all different kinds of years. I got these going back to, well, just the way we used to do back in the 80s. Never mind. Uh, uh, so, anyway, so 2009. 373 is the average price. 2013, the average price is 431. As I said, we got all these accelerations. The average price paid. Uh, okay, uh, Mexico is now half of everything we sell. Uh, go, uh, United States sales goes to Mexico. Um, uh, about 14% goes to Canada. 7% goes to Japan. 6% goes to Korea three to Saudi Arabia but look who's growing fast Saudi Arabia may be a small percent but it is growing fast so you see all this kind of stuff going on here uh, world percent of world total of the exports got that so what's the average price paid 360 378 409 well take a look at these prices three dollars for Korea is paying the most two set 
Saudi Arabia is paying the least, 427. Now, not sure why that is, uh, but you could very well re Google uh, Saudi Arabia cheese exports, to, uh, USA Saudi Arabia cheese exports 2009. See what it's, it, the stories show. Stories will come up about that. There's stories about everything. So, uh, prices, three. Bahamas paying about the most. Bahamas seems to be paying a premium there. So keep that in mind. That's where premium cheeses are going. It's got a 100% increase. It, it, it too is accelerating. Looks like maybe a good business, a good market to go after. Um, because you remember, where, whoever's selling cheese and doing well with it, all you got to do is show them, uh, show a, an importer that uh, the, the price is good, the, uh, the sales are increasing, and then the in, only, the, any importer that's not aware of this is going to want to test this out. And that's what you're looking for eventually is to find people who will test uh, your product. Anybody who buys a test order is testing the product in that foreign land and helping you with the search and learn process. So we're, as you'll see later, we're only doing test orders to start to get our sales going here. But that's for a later video. Uh, Okay, so um, this cheese, now what strikes me immediately here is the narrow range of prices for cheese for all these countries from all these different continents. But here's what's going on. Cheese is highly regulated in the United States, highly controlled in the United States, therefore, and, and highly reported. Therefore, everybody in the world knows exactly what the prices are. So uh, that's that's uh, 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 you're not going to find much variance in the price. Now you will find these are average prices. So this is the average price paid by Mexicans. This is the average price paid by Bahamas. So that means that here they're about you know uh, 15, 20 percent uh, higher price leaving USA than Mexico. You can buy a lot of of. Uh, Oh, uh, luxury specialty for 15 15 uh, percent uh, uh, price, uh, price margin price difference so um, uh, it means a lot is a low uh, below this 428 and a lot is above now I suspect that that 428 going to Mexico these prices going to Mexico is probably a pretty standard price not it may be that there's not much variance off that but I suspect to a place like Japan there's both low cost heading into taco time and and uh, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken and those places that Americans buy their cheese from overseas and bring it in into Japan and then so there's it's heavy on a much lower price and then heavy on a much higher price as well oh boy boy, boy get rid of that uh, heavy on a much uh, higher price as well and as you just noted in my mistake there you can uh, see what the the formulas are behind each of these cells um, by clicking on the sale cell but also in my PDF if you want that I show you how to build this uh, uh, this spreadsheet or again email me and I'll send you one of these templates and it, it might say onions or whey or or something else but uh, as you saw you just overwrite it and then you you save it as as your new item here so what we do here is we now have a country we know which country we want to uh, to go after we, we know which country we want to target for our uh, our market now I, I'm presuming you're going to be doing specialty you're not competing on price and as I said this is within the context of my uh, of my uh, uh, courses and I we compete on design we sell the specialty stores we never try to compete on price and sell the mass merchandisers so uh, you, you can use this information to, to target what as a mass merchandiser what, what uh, pro, uh, countries to go after but uh, uh, our rationale is different so that's not what I'm going after um, but so sticking with selling to up, upscale um, stores that is going to be uh, what to do next um, uh, will be the next video on this series of um, finding the best customer going straight to the best customer now here's another little business I own and love it's called Seattle Teachers College if you're ever looking for courses on this and that um, it's at seattleteacherscollege.net but uh, uh, if you want to reach me in particular you can go of course to johnspires.com and reach me there so I'm gonna finish up this one with that so I want you to go ahead and create your spreadsheet and get your raw data 
and uh, if you run into any trouble email me and I might do a troubleshooting uh, video at the end of this series because you can run into all sorts of fun problems going through the process I just did a real simple one here for you um, but do uh, uh, proceed through this series and if you have questions email me um, if you're on my list of people who've taken my classes because I cannot uh, take the time to, to start from the beginning um, but uh, if you got quick questions, feedback, that kind of thing, glad to have it. So thank you very much. Good luck. Keep in touch. Over and out.